Is your snake fat? Let's talk about that. In the wild, thinner bodied snakes, such as corn snakes and like fox snakes like this one, are nimble enough that they are able to actively pursue their prey. Whereas thicker bodied snakes like say ball pythons and boa constrictors are, they prefer just to sit and lie in wait until their prey walks by and then they take advantage and grab it and eat. This is called being an opportunistic feeder. The thinner species of course are also opportunistic and whenever a male happens to walk by if they're just resting, they're not gonna turn their nose up to it, they're gonna eat that too. Basically, wild snakes don't know when their next meal will be, so they will never refuse the opportunity to eat a meal if it's there. Now think about snakes that are in captivity. We offer them food at a regular basis, but they still have that instinct to say, yes, I want food. Next day, yes, I want food, because I don't know when I'll eat next. Because of this, it's very easy to overfeed your snake to the point where it becomes obese. On the other hand, some snakes just aren't fed enough, or they are notoriously picky eaters, like there's something wrong with their environment, or their stress levels are too high, or just the species in general is known for being picky, like sometimes ball pythons or male hawks hognose snakes, and all of these factors can result in an underweight snake. To examine your snake and determine whether it's overweight, underweight, or the right weight, there's a few different things you have to look at. You're mostly going to be looking at the spine, and if their back tapers to kind of a point and that spine is sticking out, that usually means that they are underweight. However, there are some species of snakes like mangrove snakes and Asian vine snakes where that is considered normal for them. So make sure you're aware of the normal body condition for the species of snake that you keep. This is my western fox snake, and as you can see, she is pretty well rounded right here but she doesn't have what I like to call cleavage on each side of her spine. She also doesn't have scale spread along her sides, which is when the scales literally spread out from each other and you can see the skin in between. This is a sign of an overweight snake. And on the other side, you don't see any rib bones when she's turned away from you, so this is what I would consider a healthy weight for this species of snake. Now let's examine another species of snake. This is a western hognose snake. These are naturally a thicker, chunkier snake. They don't really have a neck. So they are supposed to be on kind of the heftier side just because that's how this species is. However, since they are known for being a little bit bigger, people take that to the extreme and they overfeed these guys and they become severely overweight. I would say this is another healthy weight snake because if you look at her back, it's nice and evenly rounded. You don't see a spine sticking up or cleavage on either side of the spine. You also don't see any rib bones along her sides or scale spread. When she curves away from you, there is a little bit of scale spread, but that is normal for heavier bodied snakes. When they curve, their skin is being stretched on that outer side so of course you're gonna see a little skin in between the scales. It's when you see that scale spread all the time that that snake is probably overweight. Scale spread is normal in just a couple of instances with snakes. One, if they just ate a large meal and so their skin is, you know, stretching around their food, or when the snake is gravid or pregnant. When the snakes have eggs or live young developing on the inside, of course they're gonna look bigger then because, you know, skin is stretching around the babies. This is my albino checkered garter snake, Fatness Everdeen, and she has major scale spread right now because she has a lot of babies that are cooking. She is due to give birth any day, but that's what I've been saying for the last three weeks. I don't know when you'll actually have babies. She made me wait till July last year. For gravid snakes, the thicker parts feel a little bit tougher or more solid because, you know, there's leathery shelled eggs on the inside being developed. And for live bearing species like the garter snakes, they feel kind of like a, like a water balloon because there aren't eggshells in here, but rather there are developing babies on the inside. On the other hand, fat snakes feel like a bag full of bacon grease because they're so squishy and that is literally fat on the inside of the snake. Animals are given a body condition score, which is used to refer to the weight of the animal. The body condition score is usually used for dogs and cats in vet clinics, but it can also be applied to snakes. The score ranges from one to nine, five in the middle being considered normal, a normal healthy weight, and one being so emaciated and thin that the animal is like close to death, and nine means that the animal is severely obese. The two snakes that I showed you are around the five, you know, right in the middle at a normal healthy body weight. And now let's check out a snake that I think should be at a three on the body condition score chart. 
This is Creepy Cooter. He is named after a character from another YouTube channel that we watch, and props if you know which one it is. He is a blood red mutation corn snake, and he was abandoned in someone's apartment. When they moved out, they just left him behind, and we're pretty sure he hadn't eaten in a very long time. When we first got him, he was probably a body condition score of one or two, like he was very, very skinny, and his back came up to a very steep angle, so he was just very emaciated. But we've had him for a little while now, and he's gained a lot of weight. He is still skinny though. You'll notice his spine sticking up still. It's not nearly as obvious as it used to be, and we don't anymore more see ribs down his side. So he's still on his road to recovery, but he should be just fine and he's looking so much better already. Here is one more example for you of a, a slightly underweight snake. I would say she's at a body condition of four, so she's just a little bit thin. She was the rescued ball python that I got from a nearby PetSmart, and she wasn't eating for them, but she ate right away for me. But she's still slightly skinny because she went so long without eating. As you can see, her spine sticks out a little bit, but not nearly as obvious as Creepy Cooter's. There are a couple other less subtle things you can look for in underweight snakes. One being stretchy skin. This is not normal, and this is a sign of an underweight snake. Their skin should be taut. It shouldn't be stretched out to the point where, you know, they're an overweight snake. But stretchy skin like this usually means that they're either dehydrated or underweight. This is Popeye. He's an albino Burmese python, a labyrinth mutation. He was also a abandoned and not taken care of very well. His tongue doesn't flick as much as it should, and I think he has some neurological issues. But he's gained a ton of weight for us after we adopted him. He's looking much, much better. I'd say he's a body condition of about four as well, because he's not terribly underweight anymore. But you can see with that stretchy skin, he definitely still has some weight to gain too. And finally, one more example of an underweight snake that I'd like to show you is everybody's favorite snake, Nearly Headless Nick. He has also come a long way since his eye surgery. This snake has a long history and a big story behind him, so if you don't know why he doesn't have eyes, make sure you watch this video right here so that you can be all caught up. Some snakes, if they're underweight, will have concave bellies. And this is not a good thing. It means they lack muscle mass and fat reserves underneath their skin and their scales. His, thankfully, isn't as obvious as it used to be, but you can definitely still see the concaveness of his belly. This little guy was so thin when I got him that he also had one of the worst things you see in a, an underweight snake. His skin on his side was folded upwards all the way down, and that's because he had such a lack of muscle mass that he had extra skin from the weight loss that flipped up onto himself. But that has all since filled out and his skin is folded back out again. He doesn't have that flap all the way down. But that is another thing you can see in an underweight snake. Although that flap of skin means that they are definitely a body condition score of one because they are near death if they have that flap of skin. Now let's check out some fat snakes. We're going to start with a snake that's just slightly fat. She's a little over-conditioned, you could say. This is my Mexican milk snake, Tutti Frutti, and she's probably a body condition score of six, so not too overweight. But if you look at her back, you'll see that her spine doesn't stick out at all, and instead she has slightly raised fat reserves on each side, or along each side of her spine. This is kind of what I was referring to earlier, where their back looks like the top of a loaf of bread, or it looks like they have cleavage. This tells me that she is a little bit on the chunky side, and she was just fed a lot by her previous owner. So she might not like it, but she's on a little bit of a diet right now. And finally, just one more snake to show you today. This is one of the fattest snakes I have ever met. She's not mine, she belongs to a friend of mine. This is a corn snake. Her name is Sausage. It's a very appropriate name for this snake. And if you look on her backside, she has corn snake hips. This is something that corn snakes are known for getting because they will store their extra fat reserves in the lower one third of their body. And this just expands outward more and more. Some people think it looks like they're gravid, but it's squishy. They are not gravid. You can also tell that she's overweight because when she's coiled up, she's got these big old fat rolls in the bend. You see these often in overweight ball pythons too. So if you have a ball python at home, kind of help assist in coiling it up and check it out to see if it has any of these fat rolls. I would probably rate this snake right now a body condition of eight, although it sounds like when she was first adopted, she was a body condition of nine. She has, believe it or not, lost a considerable amount of weight since she was uh, placed in her new home.
Obviously, snakes become overweight when they are fed too frequently, and in captivity, they don't move around as much as they do in the wild, so they're not burning any of those calories, which makes them more likely to become overweight. A lot of breeders will feed their snakes twice a week to make them grow faster, and this is called power feeding. And yes, it does make the snake grow faster so that you can breed it sooner, but it usually cuts their lifespan in half as a result. So it is not worth power feeding a snake in order to lose that much of its lifespan. It it's much healthier for the snake to just feed it at a normal consistency so it can live its full life at a healthy weight. This Jimmy Dean sausage actually belongs to a friend of mine, Nick. Where'd you get her? Well, I originally work at a pet store and I am the third owner as far as I know. So somebody came to me and was like, hey, I'm getting a corn snake. Can you help me with a setup? And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. So bought everything and then I meet the snake and I go, I have never seen a fat snake before. I have honestly have never seen such a snake. And they told me it was a breeder mutation, like she was born that way. I don't think so. So eventually, the same person that had adopted her came to me and was like, I don't have time or the resources to take care of this snake. It seems like she needs a little bit of special care. Will you take her? And of course, I'm a sucker, so of course I took her. So I would do the same. Of, of course. But ever since I've had her, it... I have confirmed it is fat. She was eating about every three to four days a small rat. And rats are a lot- Small rat every three to four days. Rats are a lot more fattier than mice, which is why I really recommend if you're gonna have a corn snake, feed them mice more than you would feed them rats. Mm -hmm. I usually feed my babies rats just because the fat is good for growing snakes. When it comes to adult snakes, you get this. You get the sausage link. Do you feed like babies like chunks of rats because of the high fat content? Um, rat pups, but I usually gotcha. wait until they get to the rat pup moment just because I don't feel comfortable cutting it up. Yeah. It's just my personal preference. Yeah. I, now Makes she's sense. on, she is on a strict diet of a, a small mouse every 10 days. She's not very happy with that. And also to encourage her to lose more weight, we fill up our bathtub and treat the water and then she gets hydrotherapy. So she gets little swimming therapy like little fat cats and dogs get. That is awesome. So if, if you have a pet snake at home that is overweight like sausage here, and that is actually her name, which is amazing. I think it's great. Uh, there's a couple of suggestions for you. You can do some hydrotherapy at home. And of course, the main thing is cutting back the feeding schedule, both in frequency and in the size of the prey. That's going to help out the most to, to get a snake to lose weight. She definitely won't be happy with it, but it's going to be for her health in the long run. I'll be sad when she no longer looks like a sausage because she is fun to squish. <laughs> and she's lost a lot of weight since you got her, right? Oh, yes. Wow. Can't imagine what she looked like when you first got her. Oh, there were rolls. <laughs> there were rolls? There were rolls. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this snake from way back when, it was like a year ago now. I went to a PetSmart where there was a ba an abandoned snake that had severe dorsal burns along its body. It was a ball python. I took it in and adopted it out. Nick, you adopted that snake and here he is. He's doing great. His name is Cecil now, right? Yep, that is Cecil. What's his personality like? He is a literal dog without legs. If we could treat him like a legitimate dog, taking him for walks, we would. But he's a ball python, so we treat him like a ball python. His scars have gotten so, so much better. He actually, when we first got him, he wouldn't shed on his own. Mm -hmm. We had to hold him in our hands, and he's a big spoiled baby. But he shed in our hands. I don't really recommend that, but just because they were catching on his scars, it was just to help him out. He officially did his first big shed all on his own a couple days ago. That's so exciting. So, He's grown so much since you adopted him. Like it's oh, insane yes. how much bigger he is. If you want to watch Cecil's story when I picked him up and was surprised at the amount of, I've, I had never seen scars to this extent on any snake before. So if you want to watch his rescue story, watch this video right here, and then you can get caught up with his story. Hopefully this video helps you determine whether your snake at home is underweight, a healthy weight, or overweight, and what you can do to improve their body condition if needed. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Look at the fat rolls. <laughs>